Hello beautiful bookworms, welcome back to Squirrel's Bookshelf where I'm going to give you some more book care and repair tips. I'm Jess, head squirrel, and today I'm going to show you how to restore color to cloth bound books that have become faded or spotty or mildew stained. Let's get to it! To restore the color to these books, we will need three things. One, some shoe polish of an appropriate color. Two, lighter fluid. Please, please be careful with this. Make sure you are in a well-ventilated area away from any open flames. And if you are underage, please ask an adult to help you. And finally, you'll need one or two cloth rags you won't mind getting ruined. If you'd like, you can also wear some latex or similar gloves to protect your hands from getting stained, although the polish does wash away with soap and water and a little scrub. You may also wish to protect your work surface with some sort of paper or cloth underneath. For me, I'll just wipe down my desk afterward. Now, black books generally have the best results, so I'm going to start with those, but the results will also vary depending on the type of cloth and how badly the color has been lost. With this first example, we've just got a bit of spotty fading on the spine due to some exposure to dampness. This will be very easy to fix, and I anticipate it coming out very well. So I'm going to grab my black shoe polish and lighter fluid and open both. I prefer using these sorts of solid polishes rather than a more liquid or cream type polish, but I do have an example of a creamier polish for later as that's all I could find for a particular color. But with this more solid polish, first squirt a bit of lighter fluid into the polish. Then grab your rag and with one finger underneath the cloth, rub the polish to gather up a thin layer. You don't want this to be chunky, so try to pick up a nice smooth layer on the cloth. You'll then want to squirt a little more lighter fluid onto the cloth. The lighter fluid helps break down the polish and make it a better consistency for the book cloth. Then simply rub the polish into the book cloth. As long as you keep the polish fairly thin and smooth on the cloth, and don't press too firmly as you rub in the color, the polish shouldn't affect any lettering or decoration. If the lettering on your book has been rubbed away at all, then the cloth underneath will obviously pick up the polish, but solid lettering, especially gilt lettering, shouldn't generally pick it up. That said, I have accidentally put too much polish on in the past, and it did work its way into the very edges of the letters, slightly discoloring them, so I would say go lightly on the rubbing around the letters, even if taking multiple passes is necessary. Patience is key with a lot of these book repair techniques. For the joints, you may want to stick your fingernail right into the crevice to make sure the color gets fully applied. When you're done, set the book upright and open to dry for at least 30 minutes. This next black book has a faded and browned spine. Normally this would also be an easy fix, but in this case the cloth has a sort of waxy finish. I'm not anticipating this to come out as well. It just won't soak up the polish as well with that shiny texture. The process is exactly the same as before though. Collect a thin, smooth layer of the polish with the cloth, squirt a bit more lighter fluid, and rub it in. There are some faint spots on the boards too, so I'll rub a bit onto those as well. And again, I'll set the book upright and open to dry for about 30 minutes. Finally, we've got this book, which as you can see, has been very badly faded, not only on the spine, but on the board edges as well. This one doesn't have that shiny texture, so I think the color will take well. However, because it is so faded, it may not go completely black. We should be able to vastly improve it though. This one in particular needs a lot of polish, so as you can see, I'm only doing small spots at a time, keeping that layer of polish on the cloth small, so I don't risk picking up clumps of polish that don't get properly broken down by the lighter fluid.
In this case, the color has also faded from the edges of the boards and inside edges, so I'm going to color those in too. For the very edges, it should be pretty straightforward running your finger along those. I just say be careful and don't apply too much pressure so the book doesn't slip out from under you. You don't want to end up putting polish where it doesn't belong. For the inner edges, this does take a careful hand. I tend to use a new patch of cloth with a very small amount of polish, make the cloth a bit more snug around my finger, and generally use the very tip of my finger, if not just my fingernail, to get the color right up against the end paper. It could take a bit of practice, so start from the outside edge and very slowly move in toward the end paper. Once the entire book is polished, I'll again leave it upright and opened for at least 30 minutes. Maybe slightly more for this one since so much polish was involved. Now that I've got these three black books polished and drying, I'm going to wash my hands so I don't transfer any black polish onto the other colored books. At the end of this video, I'll show the final steps, but first I want to show some examples of other colors as well. Non-black books can be much more hit and miss with the results of color restoration, mainly down to having the right color in the first place, but also due to the fact that our eye will see the difference more easily. However, if we think of this as improving the books, even if we can't entirely fix them, then I find this is still frequently worth doing. Let's take a look at a couple of red books to start, so let me grab my red polish. By the way, some of these colors you may be able to find in stores, but online you can also find a myriad of colored polishes. I've acquired mine from a mixture of in-store and online. So these are a bright, primary type red. First up, we've got this sweet little tome whose spine has been faded, but the boards look okay. I'm going to start by simply coloring in the spine, and then we'll see how it compares to the boards. If need be, I can also put some polish on the boards to ensure it all matches. Same process as before, although you'll need a clean patch of rag for the new color. Lighter fluid, polish, lighter fluid again, and rub in. Again, if you're rubbing over lettering, try to get that layer of polish you picked up nice and thin, and don't apply too much pressure to keep the lettering as clean as possible. If it does look like you got a bit of polish in there, then take a clean patch of rag and wipe it off immediately as best you can. In this case, I'm pretty happy with the spine color relative to the boards, so I'm going to set that up to dry. This next red book has been badly damp affected, so the boards are very mildew stained. Now, as long as there is no mold present in the books themselves, the book is absolutely fine to keep, but it doesn't look very good. Now, when book cloth is affected this way, it does slightly change the texture of the cloth, so even if I restore the color, you will be able to still see the spottiness on close inspection due to the slight texture difference, but it will still look much better if I do fix that color. This will also need several passes to cover the whole book. I'll put a bit on the spine as well to spruce that up, as there are small signs of wear and rubbing. And let's set that up to dry. The next color I'd like to show you is a deeper red, which you might call maroon or burgundy or something similar. For these, I'm going to use a shade called Oxblood. However, we are getting into territory of more specific colors, so you will definitely want to do a visual color check to make sure they match before applying any polish. Looking at this example, we've got both a faded spine and some patchy mildew stained fading to the boards, so we'll put some polish on all of that. it looks like it needs some edge work as well. And this is just one more example of that oxblood color. This book has been well worn and won't look great without some proper restoration to the lettering and decoration as well, but I can at least reduce its worn appearance with a spruce up of the cloth color.
And that's my two oxblood books set up to dry. Now for a green example. Green is a very difficult color in book cloth. For some reason, it tends to fade and discolor easier than any other color. But there are also many different shades of green that get used, and it can be very difficult to find a green polish that matches. In this case, I think I found a pretty good match, but this is a much creamier polish than what I've been using so far. For this one, I'm not adding any lighter fluid up front. Instead, I'm collecting some polish, then scraping my finger against the edge of the jar to get rid of the excess. I still apply the lighter fluid after though, and then rub it in as before. For this book, you may be able to see that there is some blind decoration, those indented patterns as part of the book's design. I'm going to make sure I'm getting the color in there so that they cover all of those edges. Circular motions are great for this, but you may also need to press slightly more and tackle them from different angles. For this one, because I'm wary about having too much polish, I'm having to do more passes, but I'd rather that or else I can leave the color looking patchy. I'm going to set this up to dry, but already you can see that with the lighter colors, it is harder to get the coverage looking as complete as with the darker or more vibrant colors. It is what it is, but again, at least we can improve the book. Next is this blue book, which has some very light spotty discoloration on the spine. Now, this bright blue should be obtainable fairly easily, but when I grabbed what I thought was blue, it was actually navy. I don't have the correct blue for this, so unfortunately I can't show you, but this is why you always want to do a visual check before you start applying the wrong color to a book. Instead, I hunted for a couple of navy books to show you. Unfortunately, I seem to have already fixed most of the navy books in my library, but I found these two to quickly show you at least. They both have a slightly faded spine. Right, I've let all of the books dry for a while now. The final step is to take either a clean section of your cloth or perhaps a new cloth, again, one you don't mind ruining, and thoroughly rub the areas you polished. As you rub these areas, some color will come off onto the rag. Your goal is to continue rubbing until no more color comes off. Then your book is done. You can see with this first book, it essentially looks new again. I mentioned before that black books tend to give the best results and in fact often come out looking good as new. The exceptions are, again, when the cloth has that shiny, almost waxy finish. You can see here that the spine didn't really get that much darker. A little maybe, but unfortunately, the color just wasn't able to take because of that shiny treatment. And if the fading is really severe, it may not come out perfectly black. But at least instead of being severely faded, this book is now only slightly faded. Now, you could try doing a second coating if you wanted, but from my experience, I've never had much luck with second coatings. They tend to look the same afterward. Now let's look at some of the colored books. Again, rub away. You're now doing the polishing step of polish. And when the color stops appearing on your rag, you're done. Don't forget the joints and edges if you covered those. Right, all the books are done now, dry and polished. Let's look at the results.
And that's today's lesson in book care and repair. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know below if you have any further questions or would like to see any other tips on book care and repair. A really big thank you to my current 4,219 subscribers. And until next time, be kind, be curious, and be effective. Bye!